My name is Jeff Errington. I'm director of the Centre for Bacterial Cell Biology at Newcastle University. We have one of the largest research centres working on fundamental questions in bacterial cells anywhere in the world. My own lab is interested in studying cell wall structure and regulation. The wall is a defining structure of bacterial cells. It covers the whole surface of the cell and it protects them from damage as well as restraining the very high internal osmotic pressure that pushes outwards on the cell membrane. The wall is very ancient. It was almost certainly present in the last common ancestor of all of the bacteria and therefore in the earliest true cells. One of the questions that we've become very interested in recently is how did cells grow and divide before the cell wall was invented? We've approached this by um, studying very curious variants of bacteria called L-forms that will grow in a complete absence of cell wall. In previous work, we decided to try to study L-form biology using our favorite experimental organism, Bacillus subtilis. And we worked out how to select for L-form variants in that earlier work. Early on, we, we came across two very big surprises. Um, First of all, L-forms differ from uh, normal cells in that they become completely independent of the FDSZ protein, which is essential for cell division in almost all bacteria. And secondly, um, the L-form cells uh, divide and proliferate in a very haphazard manner. They're very heterogeneous in shape and in, and in size. But if you look at stills from these kinds of movies, then what you see are two kinds of events predominantly. First of all, the production of tubules which extrude from the parent cell and then break down into separate progeny, or clusters of blebs, which again are extruded from the parent cells. In our new paper, we, we show first of all that stripping the cell wall from wild-type cells to generate pluriplasts is not enough to generate L-form growth, um, and, and that one or two mutations um, are needed before these cells will grow indefinitely. We've carefully characterized one of these mutations, and we showed that it upregulates the uh, system required for fatty acid synthesis, leading to a phenotype in which the cells have an excess of membrane. We then went on to show that other mutations which had been previously characterized and also lead to L-form growth also work by um, increased membrane synthesis. The results point to a simple model in which excess membrane synthesis leads to torsional stress and cell shape distortions. We start with newborn L-forms or protoplasts of wild-type cells. We assume that we start with a balanced area over volume ratio. Now growth of these cells in an unbalanced manner with an excess of membrane surface area leads to buckling and cell shape distortions. Eventually blebs of cytoplasma are pinched off leading to progeny. Now the generation of these progeny is favored because small cells have a larger area to volume ratio than larger cells of equivalent shape. Thus, the excess membrane synthesis drives the continued production of small progeny cells. Roman Mercier and Yoshi Kawai, the postdocs who did almost all of this work, tested this very surprisingly simple model by artificially increasing the area to volume ratio in wild type cells. They began by blocking cell division with an inhibitor and then allowing growth, which leads to the formation of elongated filaments. After 90 minutes, we have dramatically elongated cells and these cells have stored up an excess of area to volume. If we then remove the cell wall from these cells, the small cells generate more or less spherical progeny, which is shown on the panels to the top left. And in the other panels, uh, derived from the larger cells, we see spontaneous cell form-like divisions and very dramatic changes in shape. This is consistent with the notion that excess surface area is sufficient for a simple mode of proliferation. These results are exciting because um, our observations of L-form bacteria um, are strikingly reminiscent of the results from labs trying to recreate the early steps in the evolution of life. And what they found is that increasing the surface area of simple lipid vesicles generates shape distortions and proliferative events that are very similar to the ones that we've seen with our L-form bacteria. This means that our top-down approach looking at L-form bacteria and the way they proliferate in modern wall deficient cells, that is, uh, are beginning to converge with the results of bottom-up experiments done by labs working on the origin of life. Taken together, it seems that simply growing the cell membrane at a rate that outstrips growth of the cytoplasm is sufficient to enable cell proliferation. It's very plausible that this mechanism may have been used by primordial cells at the dawn of cellular life on Earth. Furthermore, it means that we now have an excellent tractable model system with which we can probe one of the most fundamental questions in biology.